Hello everyone, welcome to the second week of the Chamber Music Society of Salt Lake City's score breakdown. This week, we are going to be pulling apart the second movement of the Foray Piano Quartet in C minor. It's one of my favorite second movements of all of the chamber music repertoire because it's a lot of fun to play as a string player and it's a lot of fun putting together with the rest of the ensemble, but particularly the piano. So we're not going to spend too much time on the form of this piece this week because the form isn't as interesting as the form was in the first movement. We're not dealing with sonata form, we're dealing with really just an A, B, A form. To get started, let's do the same thing we did last week. Let's take a listen to some of the material from this piece. Right, so inside of all of these different sections, you hear there's a lot of different moving pieces. Let's open up the score and do some digging around and see if we can make sense of what's actually going on. As we heard before, this piece starts with a pizzicato accompaniment in the cello, viola, and violin. And something else that's interesting here, take a look at the time signature. We start things out in 6-8. That's going to be important the further into the piece we go. In the second system, the piano comes in with the main melody and motive throughout the movement. And once again, notice that we are in 6-8 time signature. And then, all of a sudden, we jump into 2-4. Now, this has a very different feel than the 6-8. However, the tempo from the 6-8 to the 2-4 are exactly the same. get any faster or slower. However, the feeling changed dramatically. If we listen to the material in the 6-8, things are easy going, they flow forward nicely, but then when we get to the 2-4 section, things become a bit more square. I think his choice for moving things into 2-4 is actually pretty fascinating because it gives us an entirely different energy as we go through, one that's a bit more grounded, one that's even a bit more driven instead of carefree and easy flowing like we see in the 6-8. So now, Bore does something pretty interesting. He takes the piano into 6-8 but leaves the strings in 2-4. And then we see an even bigger change. We see the piano in 6-8, the violin in 6-8, and the viola and cello in 2-4. This is where things start to get interesting because in both the violin and piano, we hear... But inside of the two lower voices of the strings, the viola and cello, we hear So this two on top of three starts to really pull the piece in almost two different directions, which again, I don't think Foray could have gotten had he chosen to keep all of the instruments in the same time signature. Now, the section is also interesting because if we look at the cello and the viola. We have one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. There's a lot of interplay back and forth, but if we were to put those lines together as if it was one instrument, all we would have is running eighth notes. So in essence, we really only have one line going through this section in those two lower voices and strings. It's just running eighth notes. So now we've gotten ourselves to the B section. There are a couple of things going on here that are worth pointing out. Just to refresh ourselves with what we heard at the beginning of this video, let's take a listen to the beginning of this section. See if you can come up with an adjective that describes the music here. To me, this is even more fun than the beginning of the piece. It's almost 
carnival-like. It's very lighthearted, very free, and it doesn't really feel like it's going anywhere until the strings come in a few bars later. From here, we almost have a bit of a reversal of roles in this section, because remember, at the beginning of the piece, we heard that the material that was in 2-4 was much more square than the material in 6-8. However, here things are flipped on its head. 6-8 is much squarer, that's a word, squarer, than the material in 2-4. Here we find the impressionistic material inside of the 2-4. It's really interesting what he chose to do here. And we continue this idea throughout until we get to page 37, at which point we start to cascade from the cello into the viola, into the first violin, and then in the next system, we repeat the same thing. Cello, viola, first violin. But then my favorite part of the movement arrives and it takes us in a completely different direction. Take a listen to this. gorgeous melody shared by the first violin and the cello. In this section, Foray doesn't distinguish characters through instrumentation nor the meter he chooses in the different registers. He's simply going straight for this beautiful swash of sound. And yes, I just used the word swash. We're making up a lot of different words today. He's making this entire wash of sound available to him in all four of the instruments. At this point, we return to the original A section of the piece, though the ideas are explored much less than they were at the beginning. Because again, if Foray were to take the A section and basically just copy and paste it to the end of the piece, things would become pedantic pretty quickly. So instead, he simply gives us the same musical ideas for a second go around, doesn't develop them, doesn't take them out to their logical conclusions, at which point he gives us a robust and exciting ending to the movement. So that covers the second movement of for a piano quartet in C minor. Next week, we are going to be delving into the third movement. And the third movement is one of the most beautiful movements of chamber music that I think I've ever had the pleasure of playing. And the third movement actually has a little bit to do with Foray's life. It is somewhat autobiographical. Be sure to listen to the movement so that you're ahead of the game, you know what it is that we're talking about as we go through and pick the movement apart. There are a couple of recommended recordings in the description below. Be sure to at least listen to one of them so that in the next conversation, we're ready to go. In the meantime, enjoy your week and we will see you then.